So we were discussing something related to the trees by Ser. And I asked you to work on the uh, chapter one to four related to that. Chapter one to chapter three, at least. And if you can go on to chapter four, that is even better. And uh, the main goal is to understand a paper which we, uh, which I actually forwarded to all of you. This is related to Cannon's conjecture. And one of the foundational works related to Cannon's conjecture, um, foundational uh, theoretical works rather, that we can try to learn involves the Bassetti theory. And that's the reason we are actually focusing on this particular book by Ser. It's a very beautiful book. So, uh, Shomodi, did you get the time to look into it? Rajushi, please tell me what you have learned so far. So, in uh, chapter two of this particular book, uh, this is called Trees. The name of the book, the name of the book is Trees, and the chapter two of it is also Trees. It's a very useful chapter from the graph theoretic point of view. There are some information related to um, homotopy theory as well. So uh, I think some of you have uh, studied about algebraic group theory. Maybe you have seen it, uh, and algebraic topology in some book like Thatcher or Hatcher or something like that. One of the things that we would like to understand is the relationship between the trees and free groups. Uh, so this is for today. Our main goal is to understand the relationship between trees and free groups. Uh, Shomudip, are you able to hear me? Rajushi, can you hear me? Please. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, Shomudip, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is one of the cardinal ideas that we want to understand. And this is in chapter three of the book that I'm referring to. In fact, it is the uh, proposition 15 of that chapter. Proposition 15. So I think all of you have the book. Maybe you can have a look into it. It's a very simple but beautiful thing that there is a group, capital X is a graph defined by a group G and a subset S of the group. So here, capital G is a group and capital S is a subset of the group. And X is defined as a particular graph with this information, with the group elements of G and subset elements S. I'll tell you how it is defined in a very short moment of time. And it is said that the following conditions are equivalent. So what are the two conditions? The first condition is X is a tree. And the second condition is G is a free group with basis S. Free group with basis S. So these are the two most important equivalences that we get out of this particular uh, proposition 15. Uh, we want to understand what the proof is, of course. But even before we do that, let's first talk about the graph that Sarah is referring to. This, this graph, that would be quite important for our purpose. So we'll first try to understand the graph. And then we'll try to draw some of the graphs, OK? Uh, so the graph that we want to draw. and 
its starting point has the following data a group g and a subset s of the group with this information we want to describe the graph so how do we do that well the graph will contain some vertices so the vertices will be the elements of G. And the edges, so if we want to tell what the graph is, we have to tell what the edges of the graph is. So edges will be G cross capital S, this subset, this uh, portions, this product, you can say, it's, let's not call it quotient. So this is product, it's Cartesian product of two sets. I'll tell you what, this is actually quite simple. I'll tell you what it means. Suppose G contains only one element, which you can denote by E or small s or whatever. Now, capital S is a subset of G. So you really don't have much choice. If you want to take it as a non-empty subset, then you can also take capital S as small e. And now you want to draw this particular graph. So how do you want to draw it? Well, you draw a dot for every element in G. Well, there are nothing much to do. There is only one element in G. So there, you draw only one dot. And then you draw an edge. Well, you draw as many edges as you can. One edge for each element in G cross S. So what is G cross S? G cross S in this particular case is simply E comma E. Right? This particular element, singleton set E comma E. Okay. So you have one edge. You want to know where it starts and where it ends, the origin of the edge and the terminus of the edge. Even loop by yes. So the origin of the edge, the origin of the edge is let's call it O of E comma E is equal to E and the terminus of the edge is T E comma E is equal to E star E. Now you might be a little bit confused, but this is actually like this, that origin, if, if in, in, a, in a general situation, if, in a, so I'll write it like this, in a general situation, if G is an element of capital G and S is an element of small capital S, then how do we define the edge? How do we define, define the edge G comma S? Well, it starts at G and ends at GS. It starts at G and ends at GS. That's how the edge g comma s is defined remember if you want to define an edge you have to tell where the edge is starting and where the edge is ending so this is how it is defined and i think it is in the in the beginning of the trees chapter that's how he is setting up the stuff he will be saying that this is exactly how he will be defining the origin and the terminus of an edge in his system. So you can, you can double check that, I think. There's many beautiful stuff in this particular piece. It's one of the seminal works by one of the greatest mathematicians of our times. Uh, let's, let me just indicate, okay, yeah, 
So this is page 16. You can check page 16. The origin of G comma S is G and the terminal is of G comma S is GS. There are some benefits of writing it like this. Okay. So in this particular case, in the case where we have the trivial group, the singleton group, the origin is the E, the point E, the single point. And the terminus is also E star E is E. So it starts here and it ends here. It's an oriented edge. And the name of the edge is E comma E. Okay. Uh, do all of you follow uh, and Shomuri? This is actually quite simple for this is a group with one elements. Let's have a group with two elements. Maybe we understand it a little bit better. So if a group has two elements, the identity and let's say another element G. Okay. So it has two elements. It's a cyclic group of two elements. So it means that there is a so G square is E basically. Now, how do we, and let's take capital S. Let's take capital S as small g, this element, one element, a non-trivial element here, OK? So now, how do we draw the graph? Can you draw the graph, both of you in your notebook? It's quite simple, actually. You have to take two dots, one each for one element in the group. And you have to take the set of edges, which is defined as G cross S. So G cross S in this particular case means E comma G. G comma G. G comma G. So you loop and the edge. So there will be two edges, right? Yes, sir. So what is the origin of E comma G? It is E and the terminus of E comma G is G. E G. dot G, that is G. So it's going from E to G. And this is E comma G, this particular edge is E comma G. Right? Now let's look at the origin of G comma G. That's G. And or terminus of G comma G is G square, that is G star G, which is E. So it starts at G, it ends at E. So this is the G comma G edge. Right? So, the, so we are learning how to draw the graph like Sarah told us to draw. It's quite beautiful. It's quite nice. Now let's do another one with uh, infinitely many generators. There is actually a good picture of that, but we will try to uh, we will try to draw the picture on our own so that we learn it. So that we learn how to draw, do it. This is in the page twenty seven. It's a very beautiful picture. I think most of you have learned about it in college or something i don't know so this is the pre group generated by uh, two generators in some sense so so there is a group g where there are many elements uh, and i'll write it okay maybe I, maybe i can write it like this there is X and Y, let's suppose these are the two generators of this particular group. And there is no relator in a way that is one way to say that the group is free. It's no relator. OK, so now uh, how do we go about it? Well, we have to take capital S as X comma Y. And G is the total, G is the set of all elements of the group. 
So maybe it contains E, it contains X, X square and so on, X, Y, Y, X, all the elements. So this is the entire group G and we have S as our set, uh, the generating set or the set that we are going to focus on. Remember the graph that we want to draw needs two, two pieces of data. One is G, one is capital S. We need to tell the entire group what group we are working with. And you also need to tell what subset um, of that group that we are working with. Okay, so how do how will it look like? So let's start with one dot for each element of the group G. So if the first dot is E, the origin. Okay, now what do we do? So remember, we have to also worry about the edges. So edge set of edges is G cross S. So for example, in this space, we have E comma X, E comma Y, X comma X, X comma Y, and so on. These are the elements of the edge set. These are the edges. Okay, no one writes it like this anymore. People directly go ahead and draw it up, but at least once you should. So you have E. Let's look at the vertex E comma uh, edge E comma X. Let's look at the vertex E comma X, uh, edge E comma X. So can you tell me what is the origin of E comma X? And what is the terminus of e comma x? If you look at this, e and x. The e and origin is e. e and the terminus is e star x, right? So that's x. So we can draw it like this actually. That it starts at e, ends at x. And the name of the edge is e comma x, right? It makes sense, isn't it? Okay. Now what? So we can apply. We can again apply e comma x here. We can we can see what happens. But there is a very important property that we can use to draw this graph quickly, and that is that it is invariant under translation. So let me just write it down. There are two properties of this graph that we will be using. So there are two properties. So what what I'm what is the input data again? Let me remind you. The input data is that you have a group G and you have a subset S of the group G and gamma GS or is equal to gamma is the graph that you are like constructing in the in that way okay the way that i just explained there are two properties interesting things that happens the first thing is so there is an action of g on gamma by left multiplication multiplication so what do i mean by that what do i mean by an action of the g on or, or, or g of on gamma which preserves orientation preserves orientation so what do i mean by that well if you what you do is if you multiply each vertex by an element of a group so each element of the each vertex is an element of the group, right? That's how the graph is drawn. So suppose you have one point as G, then its adjacent point will be GS, something like this. Now you left multiply, you left multiply both the initial and the terminal vertex by an element of the group. So maybe you multiply by G1. So what I just did is, 
I multiplied each element of an edge, the initial and the terminal points of an edge, by a group element G1. So this is the, this action, this thing that we I just did is known as the left multiplication. So if I do that, what I get is I get two more points. G1, G becomes G1, G. It's a different point in the graph. And G, GS becomes G1, GS. That's also another a different point in the graph. They may not be the same point, right? Because these two are different elements, maybe. Okay. So, but notice that there is still an edge between them because of the structure that G1G and G1GS, that is an example of one edge of the graph. So that's what I'm saying that it is left multiplication. It, 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 it has an action by left multiplication. And then we also have the fact that G acts freely on the vertices and the edges of the group. So it does not make, so G acts freely on the vertices and edges. OK, so what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that if you take any vertex G1, now you multiply this to the left by G2, or maybe to the right, doesn't really matter. The output that you get, the output is a different point. So no element of the group fixes a vertex. It's very important. It does not fix any vertex. So why doesn't it fix any vertex? Because for each vertex, we have for each group element, we have a different vertex. Now suppose after hitting by G2, a vertex G1, I come back to the same point G1. I come back to the same point G1. What does that mean? What G2 does that mean? It means G2 is identity, right? That is, if you multiply by G2 inverse on both sides, you'll get uh, so G1 inverse on both sides, you'll get G2 is equals to identity, which means that, well, I should have said acts freely on vertices and edges means that apart from the identity element, not, nothing else fixes anything. So apart from identity element, nothing else fixes the vertices or edges, which is great that we now know that the action is free and there is a uh, action by left multiplication of the group on the graph gamma. So we will be using those things here. Now, if you have E as one of the terminus points and X as another one, another track terminus points, now we can translate by left. So what do we do? Well, we will be just multiplying to the left by x and we will see what happens. So e if I multiply by x to the left and x if I multiply by x to the left, this becomes x and this becomes x square. So the normal way to actually draw this is that you have like something like this. You have x square here. Okay. So that's the next edge that we have drawn. 
so you can draw this entire picture it's a very very well known picture i think you have drawn this hundreds of times when you studied group theory in i mean this is like the first example of a free group in some sense if you don't say the like the cyclic group is also free i guess so so what you have to do as a homework is that study up to 3.3 okay i mean uh, i just touched upon the basics uh but you have to study the detailed part of this otherwise you don't have a good grasp on any of the theoretical matters i want you to both of you to study this free uh, actions of a tree and really focus on theorem 4 which is very 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 beautiful which says that a group which acts freely on a tree is a free group sounds may may sound trivial but what we are essentially doing is we are making the group act on a combinatorial element which we call the graph in this particular case and very soon what we will do is we'll take the combinatorial element that is the graph combinatorial edifice the graph and we will convert it into real graph in some sense uh, so he talks about real graph if gamma is a graph then say talks about real graph which is basically a topological um, realization of the graph it's really what it is i mean you are basically drawing the lines and you are treating them as a metric space okay you are drawing the lines and you are saying that we can really can draw we can measure distances between points and so on so uh, there is a rigorous way of saying that so essentially what we just did is we um we converted the information of the group into an action of the group on a combinatorial object which is a tree in this particular case and then later we will convert that into an action of the group on a topological object which will make it even more interesting the realization the algebra the real graph or the realization of the graph gamma okay so uh, any questions shomodi rajushi on what we have discussed so far no okay i would strongly suggest that you communicate a little bit more otherwise these sessions will become very dry cannot be one way communication okay so do up to chapter uh, sorry do up to section 3.3 that's the homework up to 3.3 please look into that and after that from there we can pick it up and learn some more next time we should be able to finish up this within the month of this entire book within the month of may and like move on to the actual material because the actual material will involve some geometric group theory some beautiful geometric group theory uh, there is a very beautiful book by brightson and hafliger but um, there are other shorter things that we can do actually so i will refer some more material at that point all right okay uh, good night all of you bye